Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 518. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 516 to 523. Hey, in this trick right here, 518, we're going to build off of 517. We have a list of items and vendors, and these vendors are submitting uh, bids, and we want to figure out which one is the lowest. So we want to have a column for low bid, so it'll tell us which one's the low, and then we want, unlike this video here, if we have duplicates, we need a formula that'll extract all of the vendors' names, uh, and then uh, figure out the percent cheaper than the next lowest bid. Alright, so we're going to come over here. The first thing we need to do is find the min value. If there's a tie, we still need the min, so we'll just use the min function. Highlight this range right here, control enter, double click and send it down. Now if we're going to have an array formula over in this range right here, and I just have two columns, you know, however many columns, the, you could have three or four and the, the formula will work. I just save space by only showing two. Uh, but if we're going to have a formula here, that extracts multiple vendor names, we need to count how many duplicates there are. Well, that's easy enough. Equals COUNTIF. And we'll take this range right here. That's just a relative uh, cell reference, range. Comma, and what is the criteria? Oh, the min value. Close parentheses, control enter, and then double click and send it down. So there we have our two there. This will um, help us with our formula because if there's only one, when we get over to here, we need to show nothing. Whereas if there's a two here, it needs to show something here and here. All right, uh, equals if, and the first thing we need to do is, is tell the formula, turn off and on, or show a blank, or calculate. Uh, so we're going to do when we um, you know have two values or one. So we're going to use columns. Because this formula is going to be copied over to a column. We want the columns. And I'm sitting in K2, so I'm going to be dollar sign lock the column reference, K2. This will increment a number, 1 and then 2. And when that is greater than this, and I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock the column reference, if, when we get over here, this will be 2, the second column. If it's greater than that 1, then what do we want? comma, the value of true, double quote. That's for blank. Now, of course, again, there's only two of them here. This formula will work however many you co copy over. Comma, otherwise, we need to look something up. And we're going to use the lookup function index. And the array of values we are going to be looking up are these right here. Now, this is sort of similar to what we did in the last one. And I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it in all direction, directions, comma. But here's where it gets uh, complicated, because ro uh, row number. Well, we're not dealing with row numbers here. We're dealing with columns. But the index will interpret, since this is a only got columns, one row and seven columns, it looks like. It'll interpret any uh, number we put in as a column number. So we're not going to even put our argument there. We'll just put it in the row. Now, if there's duplicates, what in the world are we going to do? In the last video, we did match, and it just found the relative position. Here, since we have multiple items, and we need to extract the first one here and the second one here, we're going to use small. Small will be great, because as we copy it over, we can extract the first smallest and then the second smallest. And small will go to the second 4.1. So when we're dealing with duplicates, the, we'll, it'll extract the first one here and go up and get the vendor name. But it'll know to jump to the second one when we tell the small function find the second one. And then it will get that vendor name right there. Well, what is the criteria? if? If anything in this range over here, relative, and this is not relative, we need to hit F4 and lock the column, because remember, we're here and then here. When it goes down, it needs to move. So if anything in that range is equal to the low bid, and this one's also going to be locked, F4, lock this way, but not down. If that's true, what do we want? Well, we're trying to get uh, a column number. And since we want our formula to be robust, 
we can say uh, just use the column function. Let's watch this. Column. And I'm going to highlight that same range. I should be. Uh, and I'm going to hit F4. The column of that. Now, wait a second. That's going to give us uh, B is 2, so it's going to give us 2 to H. H is uh, 8, I think it is. That's not it, so we have to subtract from it column. And it's going to be that same B2. But this one's going to be locked. Uh, column reference. That's not going to work either, because what's B is 2? What's 2 minus 2? 0, so we add 1. All right, and so that'll give us our column numbers. It'll be robust if we insert any more um, columns here and insert some more vendors or something like that. That will update. It'll always give us exact right, correct number of column numbers. All right, that's the value of true. We do not need false, so we close parentheses. Now, the small, this whole range right here, if I highlight this and hit F9, boom, there's false, 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 5. So there are no duplicates, right? Control Z. We need to, since there could be potentially two or more values, we need to then extract the first one and then the second one. So we'll use our same number incrementer right there for the K. It'll give us a 1 and then a 2. All right, and that's our. Um, column number, row number will interpret that column number as a column number, close parentheses on the index, close parentheses on the if, and then control shift enter. Drag it over one, and then down, and there we have it. Wow, look at that, the randomizer uh, got, th these two numbers are not random, I just had to have those for duplicates, but the randomizing picked out two of them. So we, in this case, we have two uh, duplicates. Now again, if there was a third one, just copy the formula over, no problem. Now, uh, percentage cheaper than the next. We did this in our last video. You can go see the uh, the logic behind this great percentage change formula. We'll have this as our end value, and our start value will be the small of that whole range right there, comma two. close parentheses, minus 1, and that'll figure out the percentage change uh, with our starting point being the second smallest. And from that going down or what's to the, the min, what's the percentage change? Wow, that's a big difference. All right, and you can see there, properly, when there's a tie, there is no percentage change downward because it's 0. All right, um, if you had, here we had used blanks when a vendor didn't submit a bid. If you want to see how to do it, this formula here with a 0, there's a slight amendment. You can download that workbook and see that there. All right, uh, duplicate vendors. We'll see you next trick.